All right, I've hinted around it long enough. It's time to let you in on it. What will my next travel rig be? What am I gonna continue to escape normal life in? Let's talk about it. My name is Eric and I quit my job to travel around the country for one year in a teardrop trailer. From Florida to California to Washington to the Canadian Rockies to Maine and back to Florida. It's always been my dream to see the entire United States and I'm doing it. I'm Escaping Normal Life. So ever since announcing that I've actually sold my teardrop, a lot of people have been chiming in and asking me, so what are you going to get next? Are you going to get a van? Are you going to get a fifth wheel? Are you going to get something bigger to tow behind your vehicle? Are you going to look at like a schoolie or are you going to get a classy RV or you're just going to get something a little bit bigger than the teardrop, kind of like um, the tab by New Camp. And those are all really great options, but if there's one thing I've learned by talking to all sorts of people with different travel setups, is that there's pros and cons to any of them. You just have to look at your travel needs and see which one has the biggest pros over the worst cons. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and talk about some of the bigger options out there when people think about nomad living. Vans, fifth wheels, maybe RVs, and maybe in my case, something a lot like the teardrop, but something a little bit bigger than that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about vans first. And while they're a great option, I just don't know if it really fits me. First off, with a van, you typically have to do a build-out in it. Now, build-out usually means you're doing things like making cabinets for storage of food or clothes. You're usually doing some sort of build-out for a bed platform. You're making a sink maybe in there to do cooking at night. And what happens over time to a lot of people is that build-out starts to fall apart because you start to go down these pretty gnarly dirt roads and back roads to go down to maybe a dispersed camping site for the night. And all that rocking around in the van over time just takes a big toll on the build-out and things start to fall apart. Also, a van's chassis is just not really built for off-road conditions. And I do know that they do make four-wheel drive vans, but the price on those are usually pretty expensive. Vans also usually don't have the ground clearance that I'm probably gonna need to get to some of these uh, off-grid camping spots. So at this point in time, I'm really not leaning towards a van. All right, so what about a fifth wheel or a scamp or some other kind of tow behind? Something maybe just a little bit bigger than the teardrop so I can, say, stand up inside of it and cook inside of it and things like that. Well, tow behinds have their own limitations. For starters, you got your tow vehicle and whatever you're pulling, and you end up being pretty long. So again, your kind of disadvantages are where you can go. For a lot of times when I was with the teardrop, I'd find myself down a road where it got pretty narrow and hard to turn around, and the teardrop really is pretty small. So I can only imagine what it would have been like if I had, say, a 20, 25, 30 foot fifth wheel behind me it would have been pretty hard to actually get out of some of those roads. Plus, fifth wheels are just not my style. They usually have way too much stuff inside of them. I'm not looking for anything with a big stove or a microwave or a full refrigerator. I don't want things like a Lazy Boy or a big screen TV in it. It's just really not my style. I generally got into this lifestyle because I like to be outside. I really want something that gives me the camp experience, but just the essential home amenities. All right, now thinking about some of the things I don't want, what are some of the things I am looking for? Well, first off, I really want something very similar to the teardrop, but just a little bit more accommodating. For starters, the things I really loved about the teardrop was that it really made me get outside as much as possible. I mean, the thing was just a bed on wheels, right? Um, so I want something that's gonna give me that kind of experience where I'm outside as much as possible. Um, but I do wanna be able to get inside there if the weather gets bad or cooking, for example, as I mentioned lots of times, the, how much challenging that was when I was outside all the time. If it was raining or super windy or snowing uh, or just really, really cold and you don't wanna deal with cooking outside in the cold. So I want something I can do all that kind of stuff in inside but nothing that's gonna say, hey, here's a big screen TV, here's a big leather couch, here's a big recliner. Basically, I'm not looking for a living room on wheels. Like I said, I'm looking for the camp experience, but something that just gives me those home amenities when I need them. Plus, I like feeling like I accomplished something when I lived in the teardrop. It's more rewarding for me to live that way. I'm not really the type to sit on a couch and push a button and have everything just work for them. I kinda like to get my hands dirty. It just feels like I'm doing more or I'm accomplishing more or at the end, the results are just better somehow because I had to kind of work for it. And that's what I kind of liked about the teardrop. So considering whatever was next for me when I got rid of the teardrop, there's a couple of things that just had to hit my checklist. One is I just needed something that was simple and functional. I need something that just got me out of the elements, out of the weather when necessary. 
didn't want any tanks. I didn't want a gray tank. I didn't need a black tank. I didn't want to mess with any of that. No tanks. I wanted simple yet functional. It had to be true four season camping ready, which means I had to have really great insulation. I definitely wanted a built-in heater inside of it. I had to be able to cook inside. That was really important to me. And I really wanted something I could stand up inside this time. Oh, and it would have been really great if I could have found something that had a desk or a table so I could work at and edit videos or whatever else I need to do on the computer from time to time. <sighs> all right, so when I started looking around at all the different options out there, one of the rigs that really stood out the most to me were slide-in truck campers. What is a slide-in truck camper? Well, a slide-in truck camper is literally something that just goes into the bed of the truck. It kind of stays there, kind of permanent. You can take it out if you necessary. So unlike a Class C or kind of a traditional motor home where you actually can kind of turn around and just get into your camper from the steering wheel, of course, the truck is its own separate thing. You have to get out of the truck if you want to get into the camper, and you usually get into the camper from the bed area. But why am I looking at one of these, right? Why not the van or anything else? Well, as I mentioned before, it kind of checks off everything I was looking for. It's a pickup truck, so it's four-wheel drive ready. It has the ground clearance I'm looking for. I want to get down some of those dirt roads, finding some of those camp spots for the night. It's not a camper you pull behind, so again, it makes it a lot easier to maneuver down some of the narrow, smaller roads. Or if you have to take it into a city, it's a lot easier to maneuver around. Or if you have to get into a parking spot, it's a lot easier to have to find a pull-through spot. And really, it just kind of offered the style I was kind of looking for. It gave me that whole camp experience, but yet in a simple house format and gave me some of the things I needed inside when I needed them. Now, a lot of the models out there offered way too much stuff for my needs. Most of them had things like an air conditioner and they had a built-in fridge and stove and all that other stuff. And as I mentioned, I wasn't looking for any of those things. So there's two models that stood out to me a lot, and that is the Scout Camper and the Kimbo. Both of them are four season ready. They're well insulated, able to handle the heat or the cold extremely well. They're simple. They have no tanks, no gray tanks, no black tanks. When you do things like cook inside of it and run water inside of it, it's actually all gravity fed. So you don't have to worry about any hoses or winterizing anything, anything breaking or leaking on you while you're in the middle of transit. They don't have couches, they don't have TVs, they don't have microwaves, they don't have giant stoves, they don't have a big master bedroom. I didn't need any of those things. I wanted something comfortable to sleep on and cook in and sit down out of the weather when necessary. Also, another reason I'm looking at these two particular models is that the light is really on the market. Since they don't offer a lot of that other stuff I wasn't looking for, it really cuts down on the weight of the camper itself. So it means you don't have to spend $90,000 on a big size truck like a Super Duty 350 or a 3500 series. Both of these models have built-in heaters, so they're ready to take on the cold if you do find yourself on those elements. They don't have any tanks. I cannot stress that enough how much I do not want to mess with tanks, and these have none of those. They have extremely simple power setups. Both of them use Jackery-style battery banks. I think the Scout uses the Gold Zero technically, and I'm not exactly sure what Kimbo uses, but they're all self-contained battery packs. They have a built-in charge controller. They actually charge via the sun through solar, which both of these models have equipped already on the roof. It's a very simple power setup. All the wires are exposed, so it's very easy to get to if you ever had any kind of power issues. You're not having to take down panels inside the camper or anything to get behind the walls to get to the wiring. It's all right there. Now, Scout offers three models. They have one called the Yoho. That's their smallest and lightest model. The Olympic and the Kenai. That's their largest model, but of course, they're heaviest. What I love about the Scouts is they're extremely clean and simple. They have a really natural look to them. I love the aesthetics of these things. It has more storage for clothes and food and things like that than the Kimbo does. The sink area is also much larger than the Kimbo, so it would make it a lot easier for me to cook meals inside of it. The way they do the water in there, it's very simple. It's just gravity fed, so there's no hoses or pumps or anything you have to mess with. But the Scout Kenai, which is the model I'm looking at because of its size and it gives me a little more space to accommodate for things, it is the heavier of the two models. It weighs in about 1,300 pounds dry. Um, after I'm going to put all my stuff in there, then I'm looking at probably 1,600, probably more like 17 or 1,800. And well, that means I have to look at a much bigger truck to accommodate that. And well, that's more money. Now, some things I really like about the Kimbo. It has one design. It's much lighter and shorter than the Scout. It'll actually fit in a mid-sized truck like a Tacoma, which means I can save a lot of money on the pickup truck that I have to buy. 
The camper itself is actually a tad cheaper by a couple thousand dollars than the Scout, which again, helps a lot when I'm having to buy a bunch of new things. It also uses gravity fed to get rid of water from the sink area and the shower area. And yes, the Kimbo actually has a shower area if you actually wanted to shower inside. But the Kimbo has less kitchen area, so prepping meals, cooking meals is gonna be a little bit harder because it doesn't have as much counter space inside of it. And it really doesn't have as much storage for food and clothes as the Scout campers do. Now, of course, I don't have any footage of these things myself. I was lucky enough to walk through a Scout camper when I was in New Hampshire um, last fall, but the only Kimbo I've ever seen in person was somebody's rig several, several months ago before I was even familiar with them. So I didn't ask to look inside the guy's rig or anything. I just said, well, that thing's interesting. So I'm gonna put links in the description below and links right here so you can click on them and get a little bit better understanding of what they may look like if you're not familiar with them. Well, that's it. That's what I'm looking at getting. I like these options a lot. I just have to save up the money now to get them because uh, my Subaru is all paid off and that means I have to take on a car payment for the truck and a payment for the camper itself. So I'm not really looking to do all this financing on tens of thousands of dollars, but it is what it is. These things will actually allow me to live a lot more comfortably on the road. I could look at it cheaper options, but these models really did offer everything I was looking for and really give me the comforts of what I was looking for on the road. All right, that's it. I'm sure lots of you have comments and thoughts around it, so please let me know in the comments below what you think. And as always, thanks for escaping normal life with me. I just want to say thank you to Emily Moratea, I hope I'm saying that correctly, and High Tech Customs, both of which left me a super thanks. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate it. If you find these videos entertaining or get any kind of value out of them, consider hitting the super thanks button. It really goes a long way by making more videos for you guys.